Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to So That Just Happened, a podcast for those who have lost their person and want to find themselves. I'm Carly Cooper, a single mom, widow, coach, author, and chronic truth seeker. My superpower is finding the funny, the hope, and the silver lining in any shit situation. This podcast is for the purpose of education only and is not a replacement for therapy. If you need additional support, please seek out a trained professional for help with your specific situation. Let's get to it, shall we? Welcome back, my friends, to another juicy episode of So That Just Happened, the podcast that's all about helping you find yourself again after losing your person. I'm your host, Carly Cooper, and today we're going to get real and dive deep into a topic that's been on my mind lately. Shifting those pesky limiting beliefs, conquering fear, and breaking free from self-sabotage. I mean, this is the shit that we all struggle with on the daily, and it's what's been holding us back from truly living that delicious, magical life we know we all deserve, but we're too scared to claim. And when I say magical, at least for me, that means living a life where I do things that feel aligned with what I value, that I surround myself around genuine people, good, kind people who I can deeply connect with and laugh with and love on, and where I can find inner peace and a sense of calm amongst the chaos. That's what magical life, that's what a magical life means for me. I'm curious, what does a magical life mean for you? I would love for you to share that with me if you want to DM me on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to know. All right. That was a bit of a tangent, but welcome to my brain. Okay. Back to limiting beliefs, fears, and self-sabotage. Let's be honest. We've all had those moments where we're feeling stuck, where we're second guessing or overthinking, or we're full of doubt, and, and we're left wondering, how do I break free from this, insert your hot mess here, and and get back to living a life that's actually excites me? That's what we're going to talk about today, my friends. So let's get down to the nitty gritty, shall we? What are these limiting beliefs that I'm talking about? Beliefs are those sneaky thoughts that we carry around in our heads, convincing ourselves that they're true. But here's the twist. Beliefs aren't necessarily good or bad or right or wrong. They're just the thoughts and the ideas or the perspectives that often come from our past experiences or things that we witnessed or even words that were that were spoken to us by our parents or our relatives or our teachers or friends or society. And the catch is, is that these thoughts or these beliefs can either lift us up or completely drag us down. So it's really important to understand that these beliefs aren't based on actual events that we've encountered. They're more about how we've interpreted these events or experiences. It's like the difference between the story we tell ourselves and the actual reality of the situation. And I did a whole episode about the stories we create, and it's called Challenging the Stories We Tell Ourselves and How to Rewrite Them. So if you haven't listened to that episode, go back and give it a listen. Um, I will link it into the show notes just for a quick way, but it's back in season one. Okay. So for all of my fellow control freaks out there, and I say that with in the nicest way possible, here's the good news. Even though we're bombarded with over 70,000 thoughts a day, and we can't control the first thought that pops into our mind, we can control the next thought. And then the next thought after that, and then the next thought after that. And then we get to decide how we're going to react or respond based on the meaning that we give to the things. So let's say someone says something to you that either really pisses you off or it triggers the shit out of you in some way. Your first thought will likely be something negative, like very reactive. It's like that knee-jerk reaction to whatever was said to you. So you may get defensive and you may want to lash out, or maybe you're really hurt 
by what was said to you, and it sends you down a shame spiral. If this is the case for you, I highly, highly recommend that you take a few long breaths to calm and ground yourself before you respond. Because remember, you get to choose how you react or respond moving forward. And if you react in a highly emotional state, you're likely going to respond with like, you know, in a dukes up, guns a blazing, defensive energy. And then the other person is going to match that negative energy or that confrontational energy. And what could have been a really small misunderstanding, it can turn into a full-blown fight that's not even about what was said. So this is how I've been reacting um, or I found myself reacting last year. I am not somebody who likes conflict or confrontation. I'm not used to it. And I try to avoid it at all costs. So I've been like that my entire life. I was a total people pleaser. I want to keep the peace. I don't want to rock the boat. That's how I've been my entire life. So I would put a smile on my face when really what I wanted to say was, fuck you. But... I repressed my true feelings because, again, I didn't want to upset people. I didn't want the confrontation. I didn't want the fight. So while other people loved me and were were so happy to be around me all the time because I was so pleasant and agreeable because that made their lives easier, inside, my soul was slowly dying and my gut and my insides were like twisted all the time because I was suffering. I wasn't getting what I needed. I didn't feel seen or heard or validated. And because of that, I felt very resentful and extremely anxious and bitter and irritable. But that's not me anymore. And be- and after doing the healing work, I found my voice again. And I have stepped back into my power I know my value. I know my worth. I'm creating healthy boundaries. And this has now become my new standard. And, you know, I'm not saying that this is easy with everything and it's not like as black and white, but I am willing to let go of or walk away from anyone or anything that doesn't meet that new standard for me. And and I want to be clear, I'm not blaming anyone for you know, treating me this way throughout my life. They didn't know. I allowed it by staying silent and by continuing to put my needs last. So I take full responsibility because I didn't say anything to try and stop it from happening. But now I do. And even though I would still rather keep the peace and live in total harmony and have the little bluebirds above my shoulder singing, I recognize that in order for me to get my needs met and my voice heard, every now and then the boat needs to be rocked, right? I still don't like fighting. I still don't want confrontation. But if I feel as if I'm not being seen or heard or something doesn't feel right, I'm going to say something. And I'm not talking about like the kind of boat rocking that I'm going to need a gravel for, you know, like I'm... I'm not I'm not looking at like creating that like chaos. But to me making waves every now and then to get your needs met forces other people to feel uncomfortable and to challenge their ways that allows them to then evaluate their actions which provides them an opportunity for their own growth and healing. And That's what I believe a healthy relationship looks like. So we all have wounds that need healing and we all get triggered by things. So as long as you're providing a safe container to grow and learn and evolve and heal each other for each other, with each other, then I believe you're on the right track. So some comments come from people that you really could give a fuck about. Like, let's be clear. Um, You may not respect their opinion. Uh, You may not respect 
how they live their lives, the choices they made. You don't have to agree with them, but if they're really just not in alignment with your values and what you think is important and your goals and and what you're striving for, then it's not worth the fight, right? You can just let that stuff go and move on. You don't need to confront every single person that triggers you. If they give value to you in your life, if they're important enough, then sure, speak up. But if it's just like someone who you don't really care about or you're not in alignment with, like, all right, God bless you on your way. I don't give a crap what you think. So pick your battles. And if someone um, really does add that value to your life or they're important to you, then choose peace and then release. Oh, I just made that up. Copyright. (laughs) Choose peace and then release. You heard it here first, folks. Okay. So let's dig deeper into the sneaky limiting beliefs. So these are the thoughts that, do you remember that like top 40 song that just gets played over and over and over again on the radio, like every hour on the hour until like you can't help but know all the lyrics, even though you loathe the song. It just, it plays on repeat. That's what these limiting beliefs thoughts are like. And they play in your subconscious mind, shaping the story that you tell yourself. And these doubts and lies, they're based on beliefs that you've soaked up throughout your entire life. And so I'm going to show you what this could look like. Picture this, Sicily, 1912. Sorry, if you get that reference, you're my people. If you don't, you're just going to think I'm insane, which is which I'm okay with. Okay. So let's say your parents raised you to believe that in order to be successful and make a good living, you have to do a conventional job, a real job. So your limiting beliefs might be if you're a creative or entrepreneurial type of person, but you were led to believe that you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or a professional, then you may have the limiting belief that you can't succeed in anything creative or entrepreneurial in and 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 be good and 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 live the life that you want like a rich wealthy life that way so your whole adult life you may have been putting a glass ceiling on your dreams so let me show you how you identify your limiting beliefs we all have them okay so just accept that i'm going to show you how you can identify what your limiting beliefs are So one telltale sign is when you catch yourself saying things like, I'd love to travel, but I can't because I don't have enough money. Or I've been putting myself, I've been thinking about putting myself back out there, but I can't because I'm too old to start over. Whatever excuse comes after the word because usually points to the limiting beliefs that have been holding you back. So in the examples above, The limiting beliefs are not having enough money or being too old. And while these may feel true for you, so yeah, you might look in your bank account and say, well, I really don't have any money in there, so that feels true. Or yeah, I am pushing a certain age, and so yeah, I am aging, that's true. While these may feel true for you, they're actually bullshit, okay? So there's always ways to make more money. There are countless examples of people who have been in creative entrepreneurial um, careers and are super successful. And there are plenty of, of men and women who have started the the most successful chapter of their life or found the love of their life in the back nine of their lives, right? So while it might be fact that right now you don't have enough money in your bank account or that you are 65 years old, it doesn't mean that you can't still achieve and get what you want and find the love or create that next project or whatever. So that's where they become bullshit. So limiting beliefs often crop up like a bad wedgie when you when you have a really strong desire something for something but even bigger doubts. So you have a strong desire, you want something, but you doubt that you can have it, do it, achieve it, 
whatever. You're too caught up in the how, like how to make your dreams a reality. And you're focusing too heavily on past mistakes or failures or or attempts that you've tried it and it didn't work. That's where you're focused on. And so you don't believe that what you want is possible. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Limiting beliefs are just fear in disguise. And I get it. Fear's a bitch. It's hard and scary to take risks and be vulnerable and put yourself out there. And that's why most people settle for the unpre- for the predictable and the comfortable. Right? They aren't they're not necessarily happy or fulfilled, but it's the devil they know. It's they just want to coast. I mean, they don't want to, but they are coasting because it feels familiar, it's easier, you know, it's not it's again, it's not rocking the boat, it's like it's predictable. But once you spot the limiting beliefs and and recognize them as fear, you can start doing the work to release the lies and create more empowering beliefs. And so this is some of the work that I cover in a lot of detail um, in my Rekindle Your Life program. And I'll share more about that at the end and how you can get on the waiting list and snag some really big savings. I'm going to be launching this program in February of 2024. So stick around until the end and I will share more about that. Okay, but now I want to look at at, at self-sabotaging beliefs and fears. So a lot of people say, oh, it's I'm self-sabotaging, but they may not even really know what that means. So self-sabotage, I want you to picture it like it's this really annoying, needy, energy-sucking vampire kind of person. We all kind of know them. Hopefully we're not married to them <laughs> or related to them, but sometimes we are. Or, you know, it could be that person in your friend group who you just can't let go, let go of. Um, So picture that person who shows up uninvited to your carefully planned life is awesome party. Okay. This is self-sabotage. So it's the kind of party, it's the kind of event that you've spent weeks organizing with deliberate intention and laser focus with all the hopes and dreams on the guest list. So here you are, you're basking in the glow of your potential success. You're mingling and you're clinking champagne glasses with confidence and optimism. And then self-sabotage sneaks in through the side door disguised as your party goer. And it shuffles over to where you are And it starts whispering doubt in your ear, trying to dampen the mood with fear, insecurity, and uncertainty. It's questioning your appetizer choices or your decor or even your fucking outfit. Okay. And so as you're sipping on your glass of ambition, it slips into the conversation and it plants the seeds of what ifs and worst case scenarios. And suddenly the DJ in your mind changes the tune from that upbeat dance mix of I've got this to the depressing ballad of who the fuck do I think I am? So now you feel the walls around your heart go up like the bouncers guarding a VIP club and doubt and insecurity plague your mind with thoughts like, well, what if nobody will pay for my product or services? Or what if I, what if nobody finds me attractive? And what if people judge me? So these self-sabotaging thoughts, they masquerade as your inner critic, and they're here to create chaos. But here's the saving grace. These thoughts are all coming from your limiting beliefs and your fears, and they're about as real as the faces of the housewives of Beverly Hills. Okay, so they might look convincing, but they're just a distortion of reality. So the question is, How do we kick this party crasher out and get back to our fabulous life celebration? Well, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that in my Rekindle Your Life program. Insert shameless plug here. So the crazy part is that there's often no logical or rational reason for your fears and doubts. You're smart and you're highly capable, but these thoughts are like 
a game of tug of war between your conscious and your subconscious minds. So why do we self-sabotage when we know there's no benefit? There's nothing good that's going to come out of of self-sabotaging. Why do we do it? It comes down to a lack of self-esteem, self-worth, and self-confidence. But the deeper and more common reason is fear and resistance. So your fears and limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging behaviors are all tactics that your ego uses to create this safe and keep you cozy in your little comfort zone. Like your ego likes change about as much as a woman likes going for a pap. Am I right, ladies? And it'll do whatever it takes to avoid being put in that uncomfortable situation. So it's going to feed you lies and it's going to scare the shit out of you. So you're like, no, I'm not going to take that risk. I'm not going to venture into the unpredictable because that feels dangerous to me. So here's the thing. Every single one of us faces fear and resistance. We all do. I don't care how evolved, how much work you've been doing, how, how much money you have in the bank, how you grew up, we all have it. It's part of the human experience. And the difference between those who are living their best lives and those who struggle to find inner peace and happiness is that the former are willing to do what most aren't. They feel their fear and resistance. They look it straight in the eye and they say, fuck you, I'm doing it anyway. Now, In order to be different and attract different results in your life, you have to be willing to think and act differently. And from my experience, sadly, the only way that most people ever really truly understand this is when they've hit their personal rock bottom. And I hope that by sharing my stories and experiences with you, you can get ahead of things and catch yourself before your rock bottom hits you. And if you believe you're in your rock bottom, then I want to show you how to dig your way back up to the light. So I want to share a personal story here. I used to be fiercely independent. I still am. But when my husband was alive, his work took him away for four months of every year. He was a camp director. And from May until September, he was up at the camp. And so it forced me to become self-sufficient, self-reliant. I had to really like find my own happiness. And because I couldn't depend on him for that, nor should, you know, that's a whole other episode. We shouldn't depend on other people for our own happiness, but whatever we do. Um, So here's, that's what I had to do. I had to create a way for me to just be able to do everything on my own. And here's the thing. In some ways, I'm super proud of that, right? I'm resourceful. I'm resilient. I'm strong. I'm capable. I know shit. Like, that's great. That's incredibly empowering. But in some ways, it hardened me. So when my husband passed away and the support from friends and family started pouring in, I didn't know how to accept it. I didn't want to bother anyone. And I believed that because I was strong and capable of doing everything myself, and because I was so used to being alone in many ways, I should just figure it out on my own. It's just one more thing for me to just figure out on my own. But the universe had other plans for me because apparently being widowed at 47 with a son and two dogs wasn't enough of a wake-up call for me. So in December of 2021, which was seven months-ish after my husband died, I was being, you know, all domesticated and I bent down to pick up my laundry basket. And then out of the blue, my lower back decided to go rogue on me. I felt like a creepy marionette puppet whose strings got cut and I went down. And let's just say I did not stick the landing. I literally couldn't move and I felt completely and utterly helpless. Luckily, I had my phone beside me, so thank God for that addiction. And I reached out to cancel on my friend who I I had a lunch date with. And here's the crazy part. 
When she offered to come over and help, I initially declined. I mean, it was easier for me to lie there doing my best impression of a struggling turtle than to accept her assistance. And after a few minutes, when like I was really making zero progress, and I had that fear of being like found sitting in and lying in my own filth, <laughs> um, I realized the fucked upness of this whole thing. And I called her back and very humbly and probably very mumbly, I asked for her help. And here's the win-win. It made her feel incredible to be able to help me. And it felt amazing to finally allow myself to be taken care of. Because here's the crazy part. There were so many times, and there still are so many times that I'm just like, fuck, when is it my turn for someone to take care of me? I'm so tired of just because I can, I don't want to anymore. You know, and so, like, finally, I had somebody offering me with pleasure to help me. And I was like, it's okay. I'll just lie here and suffer. But when I finally accepted it, and she brought over a pillow and she propped me up and she brought me things, like, at first, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to inconvenience you. I'm like, fuck, I'm like, great. Now, can, can I? I was kind of like loving it. And I was like, oh, can you do this for me now? And can you do that? Like, I was kind of like, I had to rein it in. But anyway, I digress. The thing is, when you're going through a tough time or a loss, most people don't know what to do for you. But lending a hand or grabbing groceries or cooking a meal or taking your dog for a walk or just being there with you is their absolute pleasure. And if it's not, they're not going to be the people that offer anyway. So the people that I'm that are offering you that genuinely want to help you, it is their absolute pleasure. And stepping outside of your comfort zone and confronting your resistance, it feels scary and uncomfortable and it always will. It's like you're moving into the unknown territory and you're no longer in control and you're feeling extremely exposed and vulnerable. And so this is when that fight or fight, that fight, flight, or freeze response kicks in, right? It's like you want to like fight against it or get the fuck out, or you're just like paralyzed with fear. Like that's literally what your body automatically kicks into whenever your brain or your egos feels threatened. Like it's a, it's a mechanism that we're all wired with. That's how we survived back in the day or we didn't, but the cavemen did <laughs> when they were like threatened by a saber tooth tiger coming at them. That's that fight, fight, or fleas, freeze. So it's your brain and ego's natural way to protect you from perceived danger. And we're all, all of us are hardwired this way. It, it, it saves us in many ways. But when you push yourself towards something or someone that truly lights you up, and feeds your soul, it gets easier. So when you can accept that you will always feel fear and resistance, that they are a normal part of the growth process, and when you can learn how to really feel the fear and resistance and accept them and, and learn how to shift your perspective and use these feelings as a sign that you're not you know, wrong for doing it or or wanting it, you are actually on the right path. When you can actually feel these feelings and be like, oh, okay, cool. I'm on to something here. And you can accept that as part of the journey of growth and achievement and success, then that's when you find your courage and you act despite the uncomfortable feelings because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It always will. There is no pill. There is no mushroom. There is no drink. There is no yoga pose that you can do or take that will avoid you feeling uncomfortable feelings. You have to embrace it and do it anyway. So what's the big lesson or takeaway from today's little chat? It all begins with awareness. So before you can flip the, the script on something, you've got to acknowledge it. 
You have to call it out for what it is. So I want you to think about shifting your mindset. It's kind of like a workout for your brain, right? It's like sculpting those mental biceps and and that's going to take practice and repetition and discipline and a lot of patience. And it's showing up every day. And it's every time you have that negative thought or that limiting belief or that fear feeling, it's calling it out and being like, oh, there, oh, there it is. And talking yourself through it. So if you're ready to take a deeper dive into this journey of your own self-discovery, your personal growth, figuring this shit out, finally, I've got a little secret weapon up my sleeve and it's called Rekindle Your Life. So whether you're healing from heartbreak or dealing with a loss or you're just in the mood for a major life shakeup because you're done just living a comfortable, unfulfilling, boring, stagnant existence, this program is going to be your trusty sidekick. So it's all about uncovering your inner strength, reclaiming your power, reinventing yourself, cutting through the mind clutter and really shifting the way you think, the way you talk, that your beliefs, all of it. There's so much I can't even like get into it right now. But um, if you're ready to start living unapologetically on your terms, I am going to launch this program February of 2024. So if you are listening to this after February 2024, it's already out and ready to go. And I'm going to tell you it is going to be an absolute game changer. So if you're feeling called to this adventure and you want me to be your guide, you can hop on the waiting list and score yourself an exclusive limited time deal to kickstart your journey to self-discovery and personal growth. So I'm going to put the link in the show notes so you can join the wait list. And what that's going to do is when it launches, you will have a very reduced rate of what this program will eventually sell for. And you will have the first access. So yeah. So if you're interested, if you're being called to this, if you want to learn more, um, click on the wait, the link in the show notes for, to, to join the wait list. And um, yeah, we will be in contact. Okay. That is a wrap for today. I have filled your mental buffet with some food for thought. So I want to thank you for tuning in. I am sending you loads of love and light. And until our next rendezvous, au revoir for now. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for listening to this So That Just Happened podcast. I really hope you found value in this episode and that you're walking away with at least one golden nugget that you can implement or feel inspired by. I would be so grateful if you would share it with one friend or family member who is committed to moving forward and transforming their life. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch every new episode, and please leave me a review. It would mean so much to me. Also, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at at Coach Carly. Thanks again for listening. And I'll see you in the next episode.